build your network securely and uh, everything will be fine. Hi everyone, we are happy to welcome you back to our um, IoT series. Um, this is as usual, Ivan and Alexandra from Stax. Um, so today we decided to cover um, something that was not really in our sequence of topics that we wanted to cover um, uh, since we started our uh, podcast, uh, because um, some uh, news coverage has uh, been um, or was going through through the news over the last weeks about um, how secure SSH is, and this news coverage covered an exploit um, that um, uh, has been registered with the CVE 2023-48795, and it's been uh, with regard to the security of SSH, and because our series has been heavily covering uh, VPN protocols, um, DNS, and everything which covers uh, the network when we build IoT apps, we decided to cover it today. So first of all, um, Ivan, let us maybe start with um, a little explanation what actually has been exploited and um, how you can maybe easily explain it to, to the audience. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Basically, this uh, attack is called Terrapin. Terrapin is a small turtle, and uh, the idea behind this name is that uh, this attack is against SSH, which is secure shell. So th this is a prefix uh, truncation attack. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, this approach to, to attacking the protocols is not novel. However, uh, the, the SSH was attacked uh, using this attack for the first time. So basically, the uh, if we dive, dive into what, what, what actually this attack does, um, uh, SSH uh, does a key exchange as a part of the initial handshake. Um, and um, to protect this handshake, uh, SSH authenticates the certain fields of this handshake. Mm -hmm. However, the general uh, Best practice mm -hmm. is to uh, is to authenticate the whole handshake uh, to include all, all the fields and SSH haven't included the sequence number, and this is how attack was made. So basically, you can um, supply a different sequence number. Sequence number is just the number of the packet. Uh, you can supply a different se sequence number, um, and using this technique, you can skip a few packets mm -hmm. that that are, that can be sent during during the handshake. And uh, the in the worst case scenario, you can degrade the security of okay. SSH by omitting some security measures um, ag against uh, timing mm -hmm. attacks and uh, that were introduced quite recently, actually. Okay. But otherwise, th this attack is not really uh, is, is not really serious in, in terms of like y y you can't decrypt the SSH session, and most likely if someone messes with, with the sequence mm -hmm. number, you, uh, your session will be closed. The important uh, caveat is that attack, uh, Terrapin attack, uh, needs man in the middle. So basically you need a server mm -hmm. or a router or some other node uh, that is intercepting your traffic and uh, substituting this traffic with something else. Uh, and, and actually manipulates the sequence number. So if you have uh, protection from man in the middle, y from either a VPN or uh, certificates, then you are probably fine mm -hmm. and you don't need to worry much about this attack. We at Stack help our clients to make IoT devices first-class citizens in their private networks, protect from common attacks, reduce mobile data usage while using our system, and enable audacious use cases that were not possible before. To learn more, please visit our website, stacks.io. If we think, uh, think it through, the sequencing is used to, um, uh, to make sure that the packets arrive, so the network also ch checks the, the, the numbers that are coming in. Can, can the network then be flooded also if we create, um, uh, using this uh, way of attacking SSH, if we create lots of packets that have the same um, uh, number or would this then work out to flood the network? 
probably, but uh, th this would lead, mo uh, most likely this would lead to the denial of service, mm. but you can also do denial of service multiple ways. Okay. Basically, if you have uh, unlimited bandwidth and you, you can saturate the bandwidth of your victim network, then it's denial of service. All right. Interesting, and the um, because we were discussing that the SSH per se, um, basically what you said, unfortunately the sequence number is not encrypted. By the way, mm. coming back to write a lot of topics of how secure DNS and uh, it's you know, not authenticated. Not not authenticated. Mm, okay. Yeah, basically you need to either sign the mm. initial key exchange or authenticate it using, let's say hashes, yeah. uh, something like that. B but but the general rule is is to actually sign them. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have the, the the keys that that can sign, right, and, and this is uh, uh, it seems to be the practice in also um, other protocols, right? When some things are left uh, are left open. So, uh, with regard to this, maybe you can describe a little bit how you know people find these vulnerabilities and how they how they go about it. Uh, of course, the researchers uh, know know the SSH protocol very well. Um, that they described uh, everything in their paper mm. and also in, in the short form on the website. Um, again, I'm not an expert in protocol, so I just read the paper and uh, fr from my perspective it's uh, quite uh, convincing that, that you can, uh, at least it, it's convincing that you can um, uh, temper the sequence number. Right. And uh, this is... Uh, <laughs> Never a good idea to... <laughs> <laughs> to tamper with the sequence numbers. Yeah. I guess it might happen, right? We would discuss also today how to protect and what, what, what to do um, to mitigate, uh, you know, possible things that can happen. But, right, it's also true to say because um, as, as soon as this is, uh, you know, exploited and uh, or this vulnerability is found, um, we don't know what the implications can be in the future, right? So that's that's still important to kind of look into this. Even if today we say, well, you know, you still can, you, you, your system still will stay secure. Um, we still have to see the implications of such thing over the years. This is what, what usually... Yeah, I, I don't think the implications will be substantial. First of all, everything is patched already in the latest version of uh, major SSH servers mm. like OpenSSH and DropBear which is mostly used in, in embedded um, systems. Um, yeah, the, the problem with the with SSH is you have to maintain the backward compatibility mm. and you have to patch, as, as of now, uh, we you have to patch both the client and the server okay. if, if you want these mitigations. Or you can disable the ciphers that, mm. that are affected um, and the encryption mode uh, that, uh, that are affected uh, by, this, uh, by this attack. Right. This is what, what you said, the backward compatibility was also one of the reasons for SSH protocol not to authenticate this, uh, this, this indexing? Um, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> probably. Okay. Probably, because if, if someone would create the SSH protocol from scratch right now, uh, he or she would, like, uh, mo would most likely use TLS or HTTPS. Right, right. SSH is also used for um, server access and you know lots of things in the field. I would like to maybe bring it back um, to the um, IoT topic that we are covering um, in our podcast, uh, because as um, you know, we also learned uh, that a lot of manufacturers actually use SSH reverse tunneling to actually talk to their devices. Um, is it some something that you also see a lot in the field? Um, maybe you can cover it a little bit uh, because. You know, that's why we actually decided to cover SSH in this <laughs> podcast, because actually SSH is used a lot in, in IoT applications too. Yeah, SSH is used a lot. So we, we have uh, two, two main usages for, for IoT, um, for IoT use cases. The first one is for, but we learned it from, from a company who, um, uh, from a company that produces robots. Uh, these robots move pellets in the factory mm. or I in, in the warehouse uh, and uh, basically they do not have access to the network uh, in the warehouse because it's, it's not uh, their network right. and uh, they want uh, to, however they want to get access to their robots and so what they do, they, they set up a, re a reverse SSH tunnel mm. so basically the robot uh, uh, calls back uh, the, the server 
uh, with the public IP, and then uh, you, you, you can SSH from the server to the robot, and uh, this will work s something similar to, it, to a VPN. And another use case is using SSH over VPN. Um, then you don't need the tunnel. Uh, you don't need the re reverse tunnel. The tunnel is made by, by a VPN. And this usage is much more secure because you have two layers right. of security. First layer is VPN, as usual. And most VPNs already implemented something similar to TLS or use TLS in, in, in the first place. And of course, they don't have these vulnerabilities um, at least they don't have vulnerabilities due to backward compatibility. Mm -hmm. they, they, they are quite, uh, quite modern. Uh, and even if the VPN is breached, then you have another layer, which is SSH. So yeah. you, you need to breach two layers to get to the actual data. All right. It, but it does introduce also, right, complexity, how, uh, you know, the way they manage the systems and the overhead for, for communication, I guess, with their robots. Uh, I mean, uh, reverse SSH tunnels, of course, they, this is a maintenance burden. You have to, first of all, you have to set up SSH with the modern um, authentication using certificates mm. for the server, certificates for the users. In, in this case, it's, it's not users, but, but robots. And uh, afterwards, it would be as, as safe as, as modern VPNs. However, you have to rotate the certificates yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to distribute certificates to the device yourself. And uh, this is kind of, uh, this is huge maintenance burden because if you fail to do so, th then your only connection mm -hmm. uh, will cease to exist. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, yeah, and usually, usually people are uh, quite conservative about this. They, they generate certificates one time and, and then just forget about this. Right, it's uh, yeah, also easier. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's what <laughs> what we see in a lot of uh, in a lot of uh, apps and use cases with regard to IoT. Um, okay, so um, this is clear. Then SSH is also very important for um, a lot of you know um, IoT manufacturers and people that actually operate you know fleets of something like you know cars, uh, drones, etc. What are the, you already started to cover it, what are the, um, how, to, how to cover this, basically, you know, the vulnerability has been mm -hmm. revealed, now the attack is, you know, known, so what is the best way, uh, even though, as we discussed, um, the damage can be as huge as, you know, the data is not in the clear, uh, but what the, um, you know, companies can do today to, to mitigate this attack? The easiest way to mitigate is to update your SSH servers, mm -hmm. SSH clients, um, and uh, your router's firmware, mm. which includes the, the, the new version of Dropbear, which is uh, not vulnerable. Right. And then you have to check that it's actually not vulnerable, because you know some, some Linux distributions update uh, do update fast. Uh, others are not. How and how how they can check this? Uh, is there any like tool online that 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 has been provided so far? Mm, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. The authors provided the tool that mm. that can check this. It, this tool is open source. Okay. Um, well, I, I don't advise you to to run it on production <laughs> systems though. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Just set up a <laughs> Docker container um, and uh, use whatever visualization you you are comfortable with to to check. Um, and then repeat the steps for, for the production. Um, well, this is the easiest way. If it's not a an option for you, if you can't update like the whole system or your, your uh, Linux vendor is not updating as fast as you want, then you can disable the ciphers that are vulnerable. Basically, this is uh, Chacha 20, mm -hmm. Poly, uh, uh, Cypher, uh, and another one is uh, I believe it's CBC. Um, uh, yeah, it's not a cipher; it's a uh, authentication mode. But th this should be disabled mm -hmm. already, because it, it was part of another vulnerability that was discovered like ten years ago. So it okay. should be disabled by okay. now. Okay. So it's only Chacha Poly cipher. Um, uh, well, the good good thing to know is Chacha Poly is not vulnerable actually. It's mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's the inputs that are uh, that that can be manipulated using the sequence number uh, that make it vulnerable. The mm -hmm. the, the cipher itself is is um, uh, up to date. Right. 
Yeah, and then you, uh, yeah, the third option, uh, of course, is to uh, use a VPN because it, it makes you, I don't know, it, it makes you, uh, it gives you p peace of mind mm -hmm. because w when you discover then SSH <laughs> that is used for all your robots is vulnerable, then you like, you, you you have stress. You're really concerned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You have a high amount of stress. Uh, you need to do something fast. You make mistakes. Then you lose connection to your robot, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's uh, I this problem quickly escalates. And uh, at least for the peace of mind, you you need to have a VPN to mm -hmm. protect your traffic, not only SSH but like everything. Mm -hmm. um, uh, of course, it's like the second layer of security. Some some people say that uh, it's useless to have several layers. <laughs> yes, of course, it's from mathematical standpoint, it's quite useless. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, from practical standpoint, this is what people do, yeah. and they they like multiple layers of security, and uh, this is um, mm. also the like one of the pillars of zero trust model, right. and. Uh, I, I mean, th you should definitely <laughs> do this for practical reasons. I read somewhere, good network defense should be like onion, um, uh, so it has multiple layers and should <laughs> should make an attacker cry. <laughs> 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 so I guess this is this is the the, the, the layered approach. Good analogy. Um, what is the because you said that uh, Chacha needs to be then disabled in this case? Um, what will happen because we know that uh, Chacha is used to optimize for um, uh, for for embedded devices, especially. What then happens if people would disable this disable this mode in their SSH? <laughs> uh, these devices will use some some other cipher. Actually, I don't know which one. I, I haven't checked this for Drawbear. Mm -hmm. Um, the reason why Drawbear uses Chacha by default, mm -hmm. and actually SSH also d does the same, um, is, is that it's uh, the, the alternative is to use AES mm -hmm. uh, 256, and uh, not all processors can um, actually accelerate the encryption for mm -hmm. AES. And if you can't accelerate, it's kind of uh, slow. This will and take a lot of resources yeah mm. not really a lot of resources for servers mm. but but for oh embedded oh devices embedded th device. this could be um, this might be an issue mm. Mm, yeah then so you you will have uh, more like better usage maybe right more resource usage but I, I, I don't think it's actually so, so substantial right right um, but, but still, I, I mean, you know, it's good that we discuss it because some companies, they really measure, as we know, right, for robots, like running time and they should operate with the battery so many hours. And then, I mean, I guess all together, you know, when all these things combined, when they had, you know, VPN over SSH and then, you know, disabling uh, Chacha, it can uh, add up maybe to some battery time that, that is then, you know, goes down. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, I guess, you know, the onion is good on the one side, but as soon as we speak about IoT, you also have to kind of, you know, um, choose the, the option, so to say. Um, cool. And, and, and what is the, um, uh, with regard to, um, uh, so to say, countermeasures, uh, because we discussed, you said that it's good maybe even to, to, to update uh, devices. How easy it is, because we, we talk about, let's talk about an embedded device, what is the process and mm -hmm, how easy mm -hmm. it is to actually update SSH of this device for, you know, for people that are working with that? Uh, sure, it's not as easy no, as with the server. You have to, well, depending on, on the device, you either have to rebuild the firmware with the updated version of Drawbear or you have to rebuild the Drawbear itself as, as a package and then copy this package to the device and install it. Um, I don't know if if, uh, if OpenWRT uh, has the updated version in, in their repos. Mm -hmm. um, probably, yeah, you, you, you should check. Probably you can just update the package if you're lucky. If not, uh, then if, if you have an older version of OpenWRT, you have to basically rebuild. Okay, I understand. 
Um, but I guess so if we talk about um, companies that have already updated pipelines when they can mm -hmm. um, rebuild this uh, uh, package on the server and use the existing pipelines, I guess this is kind of uh, you know easy easy pipeline that they have that don't have to build again. But I guess for companies that are just using SSH without any you know big update pipelines that they've built, this will be a substantial overhead to to, to make these updates. As usual with these devices, <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, yeah, my mm, companies should be ready for this. Mm. Uh, they opted to use routers, then they they have to play the game that 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 routers offer them. Uh, otherwise, that they have to support their own distribution, mm. like Linux distribution. Th this is even more overhead. However, routers, uh, uh, routers, Linux distributions are really small. Mm. Uh, it's around 20 megabytes, probably. That, that like the whole, the whole uh, root file system. Uh, and even if you update the, the like the all the firmware at once, then it, it's not a big deal. Mm. At least from 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 this disk space and how how many data how much data you have to transfer right all right um, thank you so much i learned a ton uh, in, in case you have any last comments to share <laughs> apart from the uh, <laughs> good good network defense as an onion <laughs> Yes, uh, yes. This is this is what what people should actually do. So you either configure the uh, certificates for SSH mm -hmm. to prevent from man in the middle attack, uh, to to prevent man in the middle attacks, um, and uh, you or you use a VPN, and you have uh, protection from from these attacks uh, on the first layer mm -hmm. also. Um, and usually, if people configure VPNs, that they don't bother with this age, so they, they leave it <laughs> as it is without without certificates. So yeah, build your network uh, securely, and uh, everything will be fine. <laughs> All right. As usual, stay secure. Um, please share your opinions with us. That was our view on the Terrapin attack that has happened and our way of, um, um, or basically the measures that we actually executed uh, inside our company. Um, please, as usual, give us new topics that we can discuss uh, and uh, write any comments if you think that, uh, yeah, if you, if you have some thoughts on this topic. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.